Math Coach presents How to Read a Number Line. A number line shows numbers in order. A number line can go in any direction, but we most often use a horizontal one. Notice that a number line has an arrow on each end. That means the numbers go on and on, all the way to infinity in both directions. The point labeled zero is called the origin. Numbers to the right of zero are greater than zero and are positive numbers. Numbers to the left are less than zero and are negative numbers. We can use a number line to represent whole numbers as well as the fractions and decimals that lie between them. We use the idea of number lines when we measure things. An inch ruler works like a piece of a number line. The inch marks show whole numbers. The marks between show fractional parts. A thermometer also works like a piece of a number line. This thermometer shows zero degrees Celsius, the freezing point of water. On a Celsius thermometer, positive numbers show temperatures above freezing. Negative numbers show temperatures below freezing. Negative five degrees. Brr, that's cold. You can read any number line in three easy steps. Step one, locate the benchmarks and find the interval between them. Step two, count the equal segments and find each length. Step three, skip count to label the marks between the benchmarks. Let's use this example. Step one, find the benchmarks and the interval. 400 and 500 are benchmarks. 500 take away 400 is 100, so the interval is 100. Step two, count the segments in between and find each length. Here we see four equal segments between the benchmarks. 100 divided by four is 25, so each segment represents 25. Step three, now we can skip count by 25 from 400 to 500 to label the marks. 425, 450, 475. That lets us identify points Q, R, and S. Now that you know the basics, let's practice. We can solve this problem together. Which best represents point P on the number line? I think it's B. Three marks after 200 is 203. Hmm, let's see if you're right. Step one, let's find the benchmarks and the interval. I see 200 and 300, so the benchmark interval is 100. Step two. Now let's count the number of equal segments between the benchmarks. Hmm. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I count ten. One hundred divided by ten is ten, so each segment is ten. Step three. Now let's skip count by 10 to label the marks. 210, 220, 230. Aha! It looks like point P is at 230. So the best answer is D, 
230. Oh, I get it now. Each mark is 10, not 1. Now try this one. Which number best represents point X on the number line? Remember, take three steps before you jump to conclusions. What is step one? That's right, find the benchmarks. Let's use zero and positive 20, since point X is between them. To finish step one, what is the interval? You got it! The interval between 0 and 20 is 20. What's step 2? Yes, count the number of equal segments. There are 4. Now what? You're right. Divide 20 by 4 to find the length of each segment. 20 divided by 4 is 5. So each segment is five. We are almost done. What's the last step? Skip count by five from zero to 20 to label the marks. I get it now. Each mark is five. So point X is at positive 15. The best answer choice is C, 15. Sometimes we need to identify a point between two marks. No problem. We use the same three steps and then one more. Try this. What is a good estimate for point G on the number line? Here we go. Start the way we always do. Find the benchmark numbers and the interval between them. The benchmark numbers are 60 and 100. The difference between 60 and 100 is 40, so the interval is 40. Step 2. Count the equal segments to find each length. Hmm, there are 4 equal segments. 40 divided by 4 is 10, so each segment is 10. Step 3. Skip count by 10 from 60 to label the marks. 70, 80, 90. And here's the extra step. Estimate the position of point G. You can see that point G is about halfway between 80 and 90. That's about 85. So 85 is a good estimate for point G. We can use the same steps to identify fractions or mixed numbers on a number line. Let's look at this example. Which is the best estimate for point F on the number line? I vote for A because it's fractional parts. Hmm, let's use the three steps to see if you are right. Step 1. Identify the benchmark numbers and the interval between them. 3 and 4 are the benchmarks. The interval is 1. When 1 is divided into smaller parts, we're working with fractions. Step 2. Count the segments and find each length. Hmm. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1 divided by 5 is 1 fifth, so each segment represents 1 fifth. See, that's what I said, it's fractions. We still have to do step 3. Let's skip count by fifths from 3 to label each mark. 3 and 1 fifth, 3 and 2 fifths, 3 and 3 fifths, 3 and 4 fifths. 3 and 5 fifths is the same as 4. Now you can see that point F is at 3 and 3 fifths. 
So the best choice is B, 3 and 3 fifths. I get it now. I have to see what numbers I'm between. 3 fifths past 3 is 3 and 3 fifths. So point F is at 3 and 3 fifths. Thanks! Now you know the three-step trick to solving tricky number line problems. When you remember to do these steps first, you are sure to solve it right.